NVIDIA is trying to use AI to improve its AI. Welcome to the recursive self-improvement era of artificial intelligence. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. One thing that has been a clear phenomenon for the last year is that access to computing power is constraining the development of advanced artificial intelligence. This has, of course, driven companies like NVIDIA and AMD to record market caps, and it has also apparently driven NVIDIA to try to use AI to design AI chips faster. NVIDIA has an AI system called Chip Nemo that's built on top of Meta's Llama 2 and trained with NVIDIA's own data. Chip Nemo has a chatbot feature that's able to respond to chip design questions such as GPU architecture, and this matters because an advanced NVIDIA chip apparently takes close to 1,000 people to build. Now, according to the Wall Street Journal, since Chip Nemo was put into the process last October, it has apparently increased productivity in ways like summarizing notes across 100 different teams and training junior engineers. Now, for now, it seems like Chip Nemo is more about improving the human processes surrounding chip design and production rather than AI actually improving AI itself. But that hasn't stopped some folks from worrying that this is the beginning of the self-recursive AI development era in which AI is used to improve other AI, which is where some people are concerned that we might lose control. For now, though, we are dealing with simple market forces. Everyone wants chips. They're hard and expensive to produce. And NVIDIA is trying to make that a little bit cheaper, faster, and easier. Now, one of the companies that is NVIDIA's biggest customers is, of course, Meta. The company has announced a new policy around watermarking AI photos on Instagram, Threads, and Facebook. Now, there are a couple parts to this. One is applying a watermark to images that are created with its own AI generator, and then expanding that to AI-generated photos made with tools ranging from DALI to Midjourney to Microsoft and Google. But they are also demanding that users who update realistic AI photos and videos have to disclose it or else face pretty severe punishment. Now, this is very clearly part and parcel of concerns around the 2024 elections. Facebook has been a very hot topic when it comes to election integrity all the way since 2016, and I'm sure they are trying to get out ahead of anticipated issues this year. There are also reasons to be concerned. Deepfakes are getting more sophisticated. You might have heard about this AI heist that recently happened, where a Hong Kong multinational was tricked out of $25 million when a number of different team members, including the CFO, showed up on a team video chat and started instructing one of the employees to begin transferring funds. Now, of course, it wasn't actually the CFO and the other employees weren't actually those employees. It was a sophisticated deepfake, although we don't have information about exactly how it was produced. In other words, whether it was something like real-time face swapping versus something that was more pre-recorded. In any case, though, when you see companies that are losing tens of millions of dollars because a video is convincing enough for someone to think it's their CFO, it dramatizes just how big an issue deepfake content is likely to be. Now, meanwhile, over in the U.S. government, a couple interesting things around the AI space. First, a group of 20 state attorneys general led by the Utah State Attorney General have written a letter to Commerce Secretary Gino Raimondo warning about President Biden's use of the Defense Production Act as a way to justify his executive order on artificial intelligence. The letter reads, The executive order seeks, without congressional authorization, to centralize government control over an emerging technology being developed by the private sector. In doing so, the executive order opens the door to using the federal government's control over AI for political ends, such as censoring responses in the name of combating disinformation. Now, whether this letter actually goes anywhere is probably pretty dubious, but it shows how this issue is likely to get politicized in the months to come. Meanwhile, even as politics comes to AI, the U.S. government is retrofitting itself around using AI as well. The Department of Homeland Security has announced that it's trying to hire 50 AI experts this year to help it with everything from halting child abuse to countering fentanyl production to assessing damage from natural disasters. Said Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, government needs the support and expertise of our country's foremost AI experts to help ensure our continued ability to harness this technology responsibly, safeguard against its malicious use, and advance our critical homeland security mission. Now, finally today, two little bits of news from Microsoft, who are the focus of our main episode as well with their new just-released Super Bowl ad about Copilot. One, in a speech in Mumbai, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella has argued that AI is being adopted and is diffusing across the world at a rate higher than any advance in the computing era of the last 70 years. He also said that Microsoft intends to help train 2 million people in India on the use of AI and encourage national governments like the Indian government to start taking a leading role because, as he put it, this new capability AI is going to have an impact on GDP. Now, a couple of days ago, in a very different type of story, Microsoft announced a partnership with next-generation news organization Semaphore, 
One of the things that I think is fascinating right now is that even as legal battles are being fought between, for example, news organizations and AI labs like Microsoft and OpenAI, those same types of parties are also finding common ground and partnership. Reuters reports that through the collaboration with Semaphore, quote, Microsoft will help the organization to identify and refine the procedures and policies to use AI responsibly in news gathering and business practices. For example, they'll be launching a breaking news feed called Signals, which, quote, journalists can use with the help of tools from OpenAI and Microsoft to provide readers with analysis and insights on breaking news stories. Now, one of the things that you've heard from people like Sam Altman is that their interest in these types of partnerships with news organizations isn't about getting access to training data. Altman's argument has, in general, been that any single source of data, even like the New York Times past body of articles, is ultimately fairly insignificant relative to the corpus of everything that's out there. Instead, what he has argued is that they're interested in helping news organizations become better. This type of partnership is certainly evidence that they are at least thinking in those terms. However, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Next up, the main AI Breakdown.